If you click this button, you're doing it wrong. Hello and welcome to the XCOM Quick Start Guide. The original XCOM is a strategic masterpiece from the DOS era of gaming that has held up remarkably well, but requires a salty veteran like myself to explain how the game works. As with all old games, the first part of the tutorial is just how to set up the game in the first place. You're going to want to download a fan-made launcher and mod manager called OpenXCOM linked in the description. Head to the URL and click on Downloads. Then, head to the Nightlies tab in the center and find the latest EXE installer for your platform. Once you've downloaded the EXE, run it. Windows might give you a warning that the program is a potential virus. If you downloaded it from the official website, you should have nothing to worry about. Click on More Info in the Windows pop-up and allow the program to run. Head through the installer. You want to make sure the data patch is checked. And I also chose to set up a desktop shortcut as well so I don't have to search up the program in my file explorer when I want to play. You can customize your install location if you want to. If you have Terra from the Deep installed, the program will also recognize that. Finish the installer and start the game. Once the game has started and you've watched the intro cutscene, head over to the Options menu. You'll need to set your resolution. Most computer monitors are 1920 by 1080 but double check if you're not sure. Then you can change your display mode. I like to choose the borderless window option because it has the best performance when alt tabbing. There are a few helpful advanced options that I recommend you enable for your first game. The first one, Custom Initial Base, lets you build the layout of your starting base instead of using the default one the original game gave you. This is helpful because the original base layout is pretty shit. If your base gets attacked, each hangar building and access lift is an entry point for the invaders, so enabling this option will let you build a base that's much easier to defend. The next one is Live Alien Sale. If you capture an alien that you don't need to interrogate, or are really strapped for cash, this lets you get rid of them. Last is Predict UFO Trajectory, which helps your interceptors optimize their flight path to any UFOs, rather than just moving in a straight line. This one isn't as important, so you should experiment with it after you've gotten used to the game. I recommend avoiding the other advanced options until you have a better understanding of the game. Okay, let's start a new game. Play on beginner. This is not up for debate. Enable Iron Man mode if you want to remove the option to restore a previous save. I wouldn't use this one on your first go. Now we're on the Geoscape. You can pan the camera with the middle mouse button and center your screen on a location by clicking the right mouse button. We're going to choose the starting location for your base. While you can put it anywhere that isn't water, you're going to want to place your base where you can protect some countries. Notice the circles around your cursor? Those are the radar ranges your base will have, which is a pretty good measure of what your base can cover. Countries that you protect will give you more funding, whereas countries that are unprotected and experience more alien attacks will reduce their funding or withdraw their support. So let's pick a location. Some of the best options are Central Europe, North America, and East Asia. Or if you're like me as a kid, you're going to put your base in Antarctica regardless of what I say. If you chose the custom initial base option, you will now be in the base building screen. Place your access lift in the third row from the top. Once that's down, you can place all the other pieces. Put your hangers above the lift, and then all the other pieces below the lift. Do not place any buildings in the same row as your access lift. That lift is acting as a choke point. It will be the only way that aliens can cross from the hangers into the rest of your base. Then the game will unceremoniously kick you back to the geoscape once you've finished. Click the bases button on the top right to go back into your base. We've got work to do. Click on the Build Facilities icon and build a new general store so you have some space for some things we will be ordering. Also build a large radar system to increase your radar detection range, and build an alien containment so any aliens you capture can be kept for interrogation. 
The numbers on the buildings you place are the time it takes to complete them. Next, click on the Soldiers tab to see the stats of your troops. You can rename them to your friends and family if you want permanent psychological damage. Check out their stats. These will all improve as they go on missions, but at this point you might as well have picked them up from the homeless shelter. They're pretty trash, but make a note of anyone with good strength and firing accuracy, because they will be a good candidate for a heavy weapon. Keep an eye out for anyone with bravery 10, because they will panic when you take a casualty. I'll do a brief summary of the stats, but you don't really need to pay attention to most of them. Time units are the currency you use on the battlefield. You use time units to move, shoot, and inevitably panic when you get killed in one shot. It's a good game, I swear. Stamina is like time units, but it doesn't replenish as quickly, so if you spend multiple turns running around, you'll have to take a breather. Health is meaningless. Odds are you'll die in one shot anyways. Bravery will make your soldier less likely to panic. Reactions is useful if you want to save time units so your soldier can shoot an alien when it's not your turn. Accuracies are self-explanatory. Strength determines how much a soldier can carry without it eating into their time units. So go back to your base and click on research. Don't ever let these guys slack off. Pick a research project for them to start on. Later on, you can research alien tech that you find on the field. Make sure that you actually allocate your researchers to the project. Now we're going to head to the Purchase tab. First, pick up a few more soldiers, because people are going to start dying soon. You can also get more scientists to speed up your research projects. Just remember to assign them when they arrive. We have a no slackers policy at XCOM. This is also where you can find aircraft weapons, remote controlled tanks, and infantry gear. Since this is the quick start guide, I'll be picking up some stun rods and electro flares which are essential. I'll also get some ammo for my heavy weapon of choice, the heavy cannon, which I like to run with high explosive ammo. Buy some stuff, experiment with the different ammo types, grenades, and the high explosive. If you run out of space for stuff you want to buy, or want to get rid of some parasite of a soldier, you can head to the Cell tab. Sell off any excess aircraft weapons first, because they take up a lot of space. If you've done some missions already, remember to sell off any extra alien corpses. We're almost ready to play the game, but we need to set up our aircraft. First we'll equip the Sky Ranger, the troop transport for your squad. Go to Equip Craft and click on Sky Ranger 1. In the Crew tab, you can see what soldiers are assigned to it. I recommend a squad size of 8 to 10. You'll need to come back to this screen whenever a soldier is killed or wounded to make sure you have enough soldiers assigned. Click on Equipment. You can see exactly how many of each item is stored on board. There is limited space, so once you start carrying a lot of extra gear into battle, you'll need to manage this more. My rule for equipping a squad is to have at least one person with a heavy weapon, and whatever ammo type you want to use. Every soldier that isn't carrying a heavy weapon should have a rifle, and, if you value their life, two clips with them in case they need to reload. Or you can have them just scavenge ammo from their dead comrades. Your choice. Pistols aren't really necessary, unless your heavy weapon burns through ammo so fast that you'll need something as backup once you fire it off. Have the people without heavy weapons carry all the grenades, stun rods, and other gear since the heavies don't want to be bogged down. You can click the inventory button to manage everyone's gear here, but you can also do it at the start of a mission. We're still waiting on some Electro Flares and Stun Rods to arrive, so remember to come back here and load them on board when they do. Now that that's done, we can click on the Geoscape to return to the map where time will resume once again. You can click on the different time boxes to speed up or slow down time. When there's nothing to do but scan for UFOs like right now, just click on one hour or one day to speed it up. Unless you're that lunatic who's been playing XCOM in real time since January 1st, 1999. Sooner or later, you'll be notified that a UFO was detected. Click on Intercept. 
If you detected a UFO in the air, use an interceptor. If the UFO is landed or crash landed, send out your Sky Ranger. If you attack a UFO with your Sky Ranger, I will come to your house. When your interceptor reaches the UFO, you will be brought into a battle screen. You can see the size of the UFO by pressing the button in the bottom right. Just click on the standard attack button, and the interceptor will start to attack. If you have taken a lot of damage, you can recall the interceptor. But what are you, some kind of loser who loses to a small UFO? Once the UFO has been shot down, it will crash land. If it crashes into water, it is unrecoverable, but if it crashes on land, you will see a little white marker on the map. You can now send out your Sky Ranger to land at the crash site. If the UFO landed where it's nighttime, make sure that you have Electro Flares loaded on your Sky Ranger. If you don't, it might be worth waiting until day to investigate. Once your Sky Ranger has set down, you will be taken into the inventory screen. Navigate through the soldiers with the arrows in the top right. You can take items from the ground and equip it into their inventory if they have space, or drop items from their inventory onto the ground for others to use. If you brought a weapon with multiple kinds of ammo, you can unload the gun by grabbing the weapon and using it to click the button to the right. Load it by grabbing a clip. Yes, clip, that's what they're called in this game, and clicking on the gun. If you have a stun rod, put it in a soldier's backpack until it's needed. A stun rod is a melee taser weapon, letting you take live aliens for study. Once you're done playing dress up, click OK to start the mission. Welcome to the Battlescape. The map is grid-based, and the environment will match the climate of the area you landed in. There's lots of buttons on the bottom, but you can mouse over them to see what they do. Scroll your mouse wheel down one step to move your view down one level. Now your view is on the ground level. Click somewhere on the ground close to your ship. You'll see some arrows and numbers showing you the path your soldier will take when they move to that location, and the number of time units they will have left when they reach that space. Click again to confirm their destination. Are you still alive? Good, that means the aliens didn't see you. Let's take a look around. Use right click to have your soldier face the direction you clicked on. They'll reveal more of the map. You might even spot an alien. If your soldier spots an alien, they will immediately stop their move where they spotted it, so you have a chance to react and tell them what to do. You can click on your soldier's gun in the toolbar and see how many time units it will cost to shoot. Click on one of the shots and your cursor will turn into a target where you can choose what square on the map to shoot at. But unless you can see an alien right now, we're going to put the gun away by right clicking. If you have the time units left, go move your recruit into cover before they get killed. Your time units the green bar will replenish after each turn. When you're done with the soldier, click on the Don't Reselect Unit button, the one with the guy crossed out, so the game will move you to another soldier and won't reselect that soldier until next turn. That's a good way of keeping track who still needs to move this turn. If it's nighttime, have your second soldier grab an electro flare from their inventory and move it to their offhand. Then, move them outside and have them throw it, the same way you fire a gun. If they're a little bitch, they can't throw far, so don't trust them with grenades. And if you're throwing a grenade, you first need to make sure that you prime it, 
and then make sure you have enough time units to throw it away before it blows up in your face. If you can successfully prime and throw a grenade without getting anyone in your squad killed, you are officially an XCOM school graduate. Well, that's about all I can tell you on the Battlescape side. Keep an eye out for aliens and try to stick to cover. If you have to end the turn out in the open, you can at least crouch to beg for mercy. XCOM fights are tense. You don't know the exact number of aliens, you don't know their location, and either one of you could die in a single hit. Play it safe. Here's a couple more tips before I go. Look for the downed UFO. There's usually a few aliens hanging around in there. Also, you can open doors by facing them and double-clicking the right mouse. It's safer than barging in. If it really starts to hit the fan, you can run all remaining troops back into your Sky Ranger and abort the mission. But Mama didn't raise no pacifist baby, so we're fighting to the last. Hopefully this guide helped you get started. XCOM is a technical game, and the fights can be challenging. But the longer you stick with it, the better you'll get and the more fun you'll have. You might have to restart a couple times before you finally win. But good luck. May the invaders have mercy on your soul.